Hey guys, it's Landon Blake from Redefine Horizons, and in this video I want to show you just some basics about uh, how we Kogo a map, draft a map. We call it Kogo. Kogo is an abbreviation for coordinate geometry, C-O-G-O. -O. And this video is for my future CAD ninja, Austin. Uh, he got some Kogo training uh, last week, and I just wanted to follow up with a short video uh, so that he could uh, watch this and kind of get a refresher. So what I'm going to show you today is uh, we're going to Kogo just a bit of this map. So this is a record of survey map that was done in Oakdale. And it should be fairly easy to Kogo. There's no curves. So all straight lines and the bearings and distances are pretty easy to read. So this is the map that we're going to Kogo. So we'll take another look at that here in a minute. I've got my AutoCAD set up. Uh, this is my Kogo template. I've got these four layers in here, boundary fee. Right away center line ties and line labels. So we're going to go ahead and start with a right away center line layer for this map. And so what we're going to do is we're going to draw this map. The parcel we're surveying is actually here at the corner of G and First. So what we want to do is we're going to start down here at the intersection of H Street and First, and we're going to come up this center line. That's why we want the center line layer active. And they give us this bearing and distance here to the top. Okay, and then we go all the way across to this monument here. He doesn't give us this intermediate distance. That's okay. Okay, and then we're going to come back over 305 feet, and we're going to come down here. Okay, so let's go start here with this. I'm going to zoom in on this so you can see this. So this is our first bearing, north 273008 west 480.20. So we're not going to use this record value here. Usually this will have an M on it for measured or C for calculated. In this case it doesn't, uh, but we don't want to use the R value if we have another value, and here we do. This is the measured value. As a general rule, we always want to use the measured value on the map, not the record value. And this might say R1 or R2 or R3, or in this case just R for record. So this is the distance that we want. So there's our bearing and our distance, so we're going to go ahead and draw that. So I'm going to just pick any old spot here, and I'm going to start to... Uh, a line so we're going to come up here to actually on the ribbon we're going to drop this down and say create line by bearing and because I'm just starting out I can pick any spot now it's asking me for the quadrant my bearing was northwest so that's over here so I can either click over here or just type 4 for the quadrant so I'm going to type 4 and then it says enter the bearing okay the bearing in this case was 27.3008 so that's how you enter the bearing Okay, so we're going to hit enter. Now it's asking us for the distance. That's the 480.20. So we'll hit enter again. Okay, so there's our first line. And if we want to check, we can just grab that. Check that that distance is 480.20. So again, just to show you on the map, we just drew this line. Now you might be wondering why it's up and down on our map, straight up and down. But in our drawing, it's at an angle. That's because this guy has north rotated a little bit to make his map fit better, and that's okay. All right, so we just drew the line that went from this intersection of H Street and First Avenue up to here, to G Street and First Avenue. Now we want to go across. We're going to go down G Street. So we want this bearing and distance here, south 6229 west. If they don't show the seconds, we're just going to assume those are zeros. So south 62 degrees 29 minutes. 00, 0 seconds west, 620.10. Again, we want to use this distance. It's the measured, not the R. Okay, so I'm going to run that command again. Create line by bearing. And we'll click that endpoint. And we're going to go ahead and enter our quadrant as southwest, so 3. And we're going to type 62.2900 for the bearing. And then we're going to put in our distance of 620. One zero. Okay, so now we've got our distance coming down. Okay, so we came up this line first, then we drew this line over. Now what we want to do is we're going to come back this 305.05 .05 to here, and we want to draw this line down. Okay, so let me show you how I'm going to do that. The way I'm going to do that is I'm going to draw a circle. And I'm going to enter that distance, 305.05. .05. 
Okay, and I'm actually going to use the break command to break this line at the intersection of the circle. So I'm going to select my line. I'm going to type F for first point. Select that intersection, click it again. Now I've got the line broken at the circle. And we can check that. It's 30505 just like we want. Delete the circle. Now I'm going to go back. Grab that line by bearing command. Click this endpoint as my start point. My quadrant this time is going to be, so the map says northwest, okay, on this line that we're drawing, but I'm actually going the other direction, so I want to flop that. Northwest becomes southeast, okay. So that's a quadrant of two. Southeast is two. Okay, my bearing is 27.3018. My distance is 480.23. Okay, now I've got my other center line in here. So back to the map. Now we've drawn this line up. We came over the 600 feet. We came back to 305. Okay, then we came down again about 480 feet. So we have this point here. Okay, so now what we want to do is we just want to close out this block. So we're going to run over this bearing 305 feet, and then we're going to come back up to the start. Okay, so the next bearing I want is south 6228.42 west, and the distance we're going to use is 305.02. Okay, so let's go back, run the line by bearing command again, click our start point. Our quadrant is 3 for southwest. Okay, the bearing is 62.2842. And our distance is 305.02. Okay, now we're going to close this out. We're going to come back up to the top here. We don't want to just grab this endpoint though. We want to draw it in with the bearing and distance to see if we have a closure error. So just to show you on the map, we drew just drew this line over here. Okay. Now we're trying to close this back up to this corner. So our bearing is. North 27, 30, 32, West, 480, 25. Okay, so quadrant four for Northwest, bearing 27.3032, and our distance 400.25. Okay, oh, I put in the wrong distance. So if you do that, you can use the lengthen, co lengthen command. We're gonna say lengthen total. Okay, the total length that we want, I grab the wrong one. The distance we want is 480.25. I say grab the line you want. Okay, so these aren't going to close exactly. This little difference here is what we call the, sur the closure error in surveying. Okay, so I'm just going to get a rough idea what that is here with a, a line dimension. Okay, so my closure error is basically 100th if you round up. So that's really good. We're not really going to worry about that. Now on this particular map, he doesn't give us the gap on this other block. So you can see here he draws this, connects this line, but he doesn't show the distance or the bearing here. So we're just going to connect connect the dots on that. Okay, it would have been nice if he gave us that bearing and distance, but he didn't. Okay, but we're just going to go ahead and close it out. I'm going to set my line type scale so that we can actually see that center line line type. So now we have the centers of our block. Okay, and what we want to do now on a map like this is we want to come in and create these side lines. Right away side lines are the actual block boundaries and we're going to do that using these distances here. So what this guy's telling us is that this block here, which is our block, our parcels right here, subject parcel, we got 40 feet, 40 feet, 40 feet, 40 feet. Okay, so that's pretty easy to remember. So we're going to come in here and we're going to use the offset command to create those sidelines. So we're going to enter a distance of 40 feet. And we're going to come in and we're going to create those sidelines. Okay, once we're done, we want to run our fillet command so we can clean up those corners. All right. And then we're going to go ahead and put these on. I actually don't want it. I'm going to make a new layer. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to just reno rename this pesky def points layer that AutoCAD creates. I'm going to call this survey boundary 
feet. You could call it right away. Or uh, sorry, survey boundary lines. You could call it a uh, sorry survey lines boundary. You could call it a uh, right away side lines, but I'm gonna just go ahead and call it block. Okay, and we'll go ahead and give that a color we haven't used yet, which looks like green. It's a nice bright color. Okay, so we'll grab these four lines that represent our block. And we'll go ahead and put that on the block layer. And we're going to go ahead and do this other block too. So we've got 40, 40, 40, 40, but notice this one is 30 and 30. Okay, so that block's going to be a little different. So we're going to do our 40s first. 40 on this side, 40 on that side, 40 on the south side. And then we've got a different offset of 30 feet on the west side and we'll do the same thing we're going to run our fillet command okay and then we're going to go ahead and put these on the block boundary layer okay now as a good check what you can do is you can come in here under your lines and curves menu and pull up your add lines and curves dialog i'm going to say bearing and distance multiple segment and we're going to go ahead and add our bearings and distances here on our center lines and then we can check those against the map okay only this one we don't need because he didn't give us a bearing and distance there. So just a quick check. Let's start with this one. Okay, so we got 480, 20, 27, 30, 08. Okay, we got 480, 20, 27, 30, 08, northwest, northwest. So that checks. So then you want to go just go around and check all your bearings and distances. All right, guys, I know we didn't talk about curves, tangent and non-tangent curves, drawing those or do anything tricky, uh, but this was just a basic... Uh, basic tutorial on how to Kogo a map. So I hope that helps Austin. It's a good refresher for him. We're just going to save our drawing and thanks for watching guys. I appreciate it.